On August 5th, news came out that shocked China's financial circle. Shanghai Electric Group Executive Director and President Huang O jumped to his death. Shanghai Electric is a large publicly listed company with a market value of 10 billion U.S. dollars. By the end of 2020, Huang O held 765,000 shares of the company. He was only 50 years old, and his business was in its prime. So, what made him in his life? First of all, please be aware that the relationship between the company and the people involved in this video is a bit complicated. If you are interested, please be patient and watch this video to the end. If not, feel free to check out one of our other videos. Now, let's move on to Huang O. In fact, this is not the first time Huang tried to commit suicide. Just five days before he jumped to his death. He tried to commit suicide by slitting his wrists, but was found in time and rescued. And just a day before he committed suicide on July 29th, he also spoke at an internal cadre meeting on behalf of the company's leadership team. On July 10th, Huang O also attended the closing ceremony of the 2021 World Artificial Intelligence Conference. People who had seen him said there seemed nothing unusual. Shanghai Electric is a large state-owned enterprise controlled by the State-Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission, and Huang O was officially appointed to president by the Shanghai Municipal Government. Let's take a look at the recent series of events at Shanghai Electric. Perhaps we can understand the reason for his suicide. On April 7th, a retired vice president of Shanghai Electric was suspected of serious disciplinary violations and was examined and investigated. By the CCP's Shanghai Commission for Discipline Inspection, on May 31st, Shanghai Electric released a major risk alert announcement that its subsidiary, Shanghai Electric Communication Technology Company, has a large amount of accounts receivable that cannot be collected. In extreme cases, this may eventually cause a loss of 8.3 billion RMB, or 1.3 billion U.S. dollars, to the company's net profit attributable to the parent company. On July 27th. Zheng Jianhua, secretary of the party committee and chairman of the board of directors of Shanghai Electric Group, was suspected of serious violations of discipline and law, and underwent disciplinary examination and supervision investigation by the Shanghai Discipline Inspection Commission. Huang O subsequently tried to commit suicide. In fact, data shows that jumping off from a building is the simplest way for a person to end his or her life. And it's becoming more and more common in the Communist Party's official circles. The Communist Party's propaganda strategy is to keep the causes of unnatural deaths secret, making it difficult for people to know the true reasons. Judging from the information currently available, Huang O's death has a lot to do with the overdue debt of Shanghai Electric's subsidiary of 1.3 billion U.S. dollars. According to Brokerage China, behind Shanghai Electric's announcement is a shocking fraud. Involving more than a dozen listed companies, amounting to 90 billion RMB or 13.9 billion U.S. dollars, and the key figure leading the fraud, Sui Tianli, was involved. In 2015, Shanghai Electric quietly set up a brand new subsidiary called Shanghai Electric Communication Technology. In that year, Shanghai Electric invested an additional 3.1 million U.S. dollars in it. Putting it in last place among its more than 50 subsidiaries. In that year, Shanghai Electric had total assets of 25 billion U.S. dollars, and this small company that suddenly appeared accounted for only one ten thousandth of the total. However, just five years later, this unimpressive subsidiary brought Shanghai Electric 1.3 billion U.S. dollars, more than the sum of Shanghai Electric's net profit for the past two years. Directly forcing Shanghai Electric into a difficult situation. Subsequently, Shanghai Electric's share price plummeted, with a cumulative maximum drawdown of more than 30 percent. So, how did this huge financial black hole come about? This mystery has much to do with the second largest shareholder of Electrical Communication. Shanghai Electric only accounts for 40 percent of the shares of Shanghai Electric Communication Technology, but it is still the first major shareholder. The second largest shareholder is Shanghai Xingdi Communication Technology. The company's legal representative is called Sui Tianli. In other words, Sui is the second largest shareholder of Shanghai Electric Communication. Publicly available information shows that Sui Tianli, born in 1961, has a college degree. 
He was discharged from the military in May 1994 and worked as a civil servant in Jiangsu province. And in October 1998, Sui entered the business world. In a report by Chinese media, The Economic Observer, it also talks about a special experience of Sui Tianli. He was an expert in the National Smart Manufacturing, also known as Made in China 2025, Innovation and Entrepreneurship competition held in 2016. His resume disclosed that he had 30 years of experience in the field of information and communication applications, having served in the People's Liberation Army, the Armed Police, the Public Security Communication Department, and the China Electronics Technology Group. He participated in the expert group of the 12th Five-Year Plan National Major Project, New Generation Broadband Communication Project, and won the second prize of the Military Science and Technology Award. His projects include the National Networking Demonstration Project, Heilongjiang Agricultural Information Technology Project, the PLA Field Wireless Image Transmission System, and the Naval Quantum Communication Experiment Project. There is not much public information about Sui Tian Li, because he applied his private network communications business as a classified project, and even listed companies do not disclose the operating conditions of many companies and controls. In March 2016, Sui Tian Li and his brother-in-law Liu Qing acquired a 50% stake in Hai Si Telecom Corporation, a new third board company with a market value of just 18.5 million US dollars. He then used his public security and military background, his expert status, and other titles to expand his network of contacts in the communications industry at rocket speed. First, he became the beneficial owner of Shanghai Xingdi Communication Technology, the second largest shareholder of Shanghai Electric, and also appeared in the incident of illicit company Goray Technology. At the same time, he is also the legal representative and the actual controller of aerospace Xinhe, and this company triggered the related business of listed companies such as Zhongtian Technology and Huizhong Group. He is also the core executive of New Generation Corporation and the legal representative of its subsidiary, Suzhou New Generation, which led to the direct trampling of listed company Kailo Technology. In addition, he also holds 100% of the Starland Institute, a company that was a shareholder of New Generation Corporation and only withdrew in September 2017. Let's look at this picture. It's his dense control and connection to dozens of listed companies. Having laid out a network of connections is just the beginning of Sui Tianli's big scam. He then began the seemingly unsophisticated scam that had more than a dozen state-owned or listed companies falling for it. Let's take a look at his tricks. Company A, which Sui controls or is affiliated with, orders from Company B, paying only a 10% deposit, while specifying that Company B must buy products from supplier C as raw materials which Sui also controls. Company B is required to pay either full payment or 90% of the purchase price when purchasing raw materials from Company C. The result is that either supplier C does not deliver the goods after receiving the payment, which is equivalent to Sui's direct embezzlement of the payment, or Company A, which ordered the goods, refused to receive the goods or receive the goods without paying the balance. In short, Company B is either cheated by Company C to pay for the raw materials in advance, or has a large amount of accounts receivable from company A. Take Shanghai Electric as an example. Its subsidiary, Electric Communication, received a business introduced by Sui. The company is controlled by Sui, and the customer could pay 10% deposit in advance. And the customer asked Electric Communication to buy raw materials from another company called hi C Communication, which is also controlled by Sui. hi C Communication required Electric Communication to pay in full in order to supply and Sui was also the second largest shareholder of Shanghai Electric Communication. So naturally, he also had decision-making power. Therefore, Electric Communication agreed to pay in full to buy the raw materials. However, after Electric Communications produced the products and delivered them to the customer, it failed to receive the remaining 90% of the purchase price after a long time. Repeated negotiations were to no avail, and even the lawsuits were no use, so it had to release a major risk alert announcement. As the successive bursts of more than a dozen listed companies, all of them were dragged into the chaos by this scam, and the products involved are invariably about communication products, most of which are clearly specified as private network communication products. Private network communication is a specialized communication network designed specifically for public security and other government departments and large state-owned enterprises. According to statistics, 
This private network communication trade network scam, led by Sui Tian Li, involved more than a dozen listed companies and many large state-owned enterprises, and involved a capital of 13.9 billion U.S. dollars. What is most strange about this series of events is the involvement of several large state-owned enterprises and the reaction of these companies after being defrauded. These listed companies or state-owned enterprises are obscure and secretive. They only released the company's risk announcement after Shanghai Electric couldn't cover up the earlier incident. The reason for this is worth investigating. On August 5th, Shanghai Electric announced that it had initiated a lawsuit against four large state-owned enterprises. These four companies were also companies that defaulted on the payment of its subsidiary, Electric Communications. These four companies are also large state-owned enterprises wholly owned by the government. They all have full payment capabilities and are well reputed. But why is the money owed to Shanghai Electric not repaid? A professional analyst suggests that these state-owned enterprises might not have actually purchased private network equipment from telecommunications. Sun Tianli might have used false documents and fake seals to purchase the equipment in the name of these large state-owned companies. After the goods are delivered, the balance will be received so that they can rest assured that 100% of the payments were made to the raw material supplier. Such a possibility may exist. However, these companies did not make any similar statements. The normal practice of companies that are counterfeited, especially state-owned enterprises, is to try to clear their name. But why didn't these companies do so? This is not normal. Even when they were sued by Shanghai Electric and the shares of one of the companies were frozen as a result, these companies did not reveal any indication of the real reason. A reporter from the Economic Observer called one of the companies, Nanjing Changjiang Electronics Information Group. The person who answered the phone replied that the company is a confidential unit and is not open to external inquiries, stating there will be a person to contact Shanghai Electric. The reporter called another company's phone and was transferred to the legal department, but was not answered. Regardless of the amount, these state-run companies refused to pay while keeping their mouths shut about the business situation. Analysis suggests that the reason for these companies' actions may be that they were not involved in these operations, that Sui Tianli used their names to do the work, and that for some reason that cannot be stated explicitly. These companies knew and had to help cover. Although the companies that have been sued are still protecting the people behind these events, after all, dozens of companies are involved, and it's not easy to keep them a secret. Such a fact shows that Sui Tianli, a relatively unknown person, has a very powerful hidden helper behind him. Huang O's death shows that his existence threatens the survival of a force, and that force he cannot afford to offend. However, without revealing the dark dealings behind the scenes, the Communist Party's Discipline Inspection Commission and the forces of supervision on the surface would not spare him. Only when a person is at a loss, when he or she can't help it, will he or she choose to end his or her life. At present, Sui Tianli's special network communication trade network incident is still fermenting. More than 10 listed companies have been hit, and is expected to worsen with the disclosure of listed companies' mid-year fiscal updates. In addition to these companies that have been announced, there are still 764 companies with accounts receivable accounting for more than 50% of operating income, especially military and communications companies, which leaves them at risk of the same downfall. As the manipulator behind this giant scam, Sui Tianli has not ever appeared in public, Currently, this case is being investigated by the public security authorities. However, the company he controlled, Shanghai Xingdi Communication Technology, is already empty and Sui has also lost contact. What exactly is his private network communication business? What other unknown transactions are hidden behind the scenes? Where did the tens of billions of dollars flow to? There are so many more mysteries yet to be revealed. Our editor explores the matter with the audience by looking up the relevant information and offers this falling speculation from a personal perspective. The business involved in Sui Tianli's scam was a private network communication and it had a great relationship with the military. And then these state-owned enterprises helped him cover it up, which is hard to explain just from the corruption aspect. Is it possible that he resold the equipment or gave it directly to some organization that could not deal with it explicitly? at the behest of some powerful individuals? You can think about the Meng Wanzhou case of Huawei. Perhaps there is a huge dark hidden secret behind this. Thank you for patiently watching to the end. 
You can also leave your thoughts in the comments below and discuss it with other viewers.